thank you lcpl and everyone who has joined the uh, event or the workshop today i know it's so cold that everybody's sitting inside and probably hibernating and just curled up under their blankets with a nice netflix movie but i think it's perfect to paint penguins today they remind us of yes virginia is back with winter and snow <laughs> i guess we didn't have that much snow in the last one to two years but i thought january would be perfect to paint something you know winter related so here we are we're going to paint this beautiful uh twin or a couple you can call um penguins and I really love, love the colors here because there's so much blue and yellow and everything. It's just just perfect uh, to set the mood. So how are we going to get this started? I'll explain everything. For now, we're just going to keep the drawing very simple. Just go ahead and do the drawing. And once we're done the drawing, I'll explain how to approach the subject, how to mix colors, we will have very limited colors and we'll try to get as uh, close to possible to do the fur of the uh, penguin. Uh, it does take time, but I'll teach you how you can do it. So go ahead, get started with the basic drawing. You don't need too much, just almost the skeleton of it and then get started. I'll give you about eight to 10 minutes to Finish the drawing while I get my colors uh, on my palette. So get started, everyone. Any questions, you can ask me or Lauren, and we'll be happy to answer. Yes, please. Uh, just type them in the chat box, and I will relay them to Niga. Someone said it's a great Valentine's Day card. It really is. That's oh, a really yes. good idea. Yeah. yeah, you can, and you can even change the color of the penguins. Make it red. <laughs> Just a simple drawing, guys. Don't stress. You don't have to be perfect with the drawing. It's totally okay. I think the best thing about this today's painting is its simplicity. We are not going to get into too much details and we're just going to try to keep the simplicity of the subject with the values and colors um, around it. Just make setting up a mood basically. And if you need the reference photos for this painting, it's already on the library website where you actually click the link to get on this program. There is also a link which uh, takes you to the photos, reference photos, where you can refer these pictures, print it out or just put it on your laptop or any device you like.
Okay, five more minutes, guys, <clears throat> before we get started. If you already can recognize the colors of what you're going to choose from the reference photos, go ahead, get started on your palette. Um, it's very clear, but then I'll explain how I'm going to actually layer each color. Okay, two more minutes and we'll start. Amiga, someone's asking how they draw the penguins. Maybe you can give a little. Okay. Uh, let's see. Sure. So, um, in a drawing and painting are two different skills. But if you just look at the picture here, uh, when you start drawing, try to imagine everything in terms of shapes, okay? If you just look at this shape, this is almost like an oval here, or you can also take it like a rectangle, but with some curves here. So if you draw a rectangle first, and then add some curves, then you can get this part. And then you can separately draw this area, okay? So the, the best way to do is to break it into parts. You can draw this horizon line here and you can measure this from here to this horizon line. And then you can see how this whole area curves. Okay, so this is how I draw. I just try to break down everything into small chunks. Because I do understand that when you see something like this big, you, you start somewhere, but then you get lost somewhere. So you can even chunk it here. Do you see this? Something here. So this becomes one part, the second part, and here you can see the other part. This is how you do And this, if you don't even want to draw the rocks, it's okay. They're very freehand. They don't have to be perfect. Same here. If you see how this whole picture is divided okay so one and two and you can also see the thickness here this is thinner and this is thicker so those are the things you can keep in mind when you start drawing anything imagine everything in terms of a circle a triangle a rectangle square this three four shapes is uh, sufficient and try to break it down it takes a little bit of observation um, to really draw and that's why i always put all the uh, reference pictures earlier so that people can take their time and draw or trace it out or whatever they feel is comfortable the so next time you can watch it out uh, on the website how to go ahead and uh, do it in advance i'm just going to erase these lines but yes just Break it down. I usually do the drawing in advance because it just consumes a lot of my time. I'm a slow drawer than a painter, so it takes time for me. And that's why I try to save that time. All right, so we can get started, everyone. And for those of you who are still drawing continue i'm not going to start i'm just going to explain what's going on here so let's get back to this penguins now i always love to keep the black and white picture close to me because i can see things very clearly how they are how i'm going to approach as you can see these both are blue the two sections but see how different they are this is so much lighter here 
Okay, and this is so much darker here. So those are one of the few things you're going to keep in mind when you start painting, how much glue to put, okay? And for something like this, you're obviously going to add less paint and more water. And this is really saturated, a lot of paint here. So you're going to have less water and more paint. That doesn't mean it's going to be dry. It's just that it's going to be, it's not going to be very pale. This is going to be like almost like a pale wash. Same way, when you start approaching the penguins, I'll definitely start with this one because I feel this is a lighter one and it's easier to track that. And then I would come here. Looking at the colors, you can see there is lots of yellow, kind of a tinge of orange, or even if you see nice burnt sienna or like brown here and everything else, this is like really pitch dark black, right? But underneath that black, if you really observe carefully, take a look at your picture again and again and again. This is not completely black or gray. You see there are some tinges of blues and grays and some more layers of different kinds of grays. And then there is this black that is on the edges to really define the subject and the shape. Right. So those are the things I'm going to keep in mind. I'm not just going to take black paint and start applying. Usually I don't use black paint, but today I'm going to use just to see when you mix how it looks, um, when you make your own black paints and when you use it from a tube, how different they are. Okay. Same thing here. When we start approaching these areas, it's not completely gray rocks or black rocks. You see some of this blue is reflecting here on these rocks. So I'm definitely going to add some blues and then pick up those grays and other colors okay and warm it up even a little bit of brown or yellows because there is warmth even on earth here okay wherever they are standing so those are the sounds you know, i'm you so glad to you um i'm sorry to interrupt you but i'm so glad you're saying that because somebody wrote in that she always has issues mixing colors and she doesn't have a black and has never been successful at mixing black so i think this is going to be great yeah. um, for people who've had those kinds of issues how you show them it's actually a lot of different colors and layers of colors not that's just right. the black yeah that's right so we'll do both that's great. to mix your own black and to use from the tube so you'll get a little bit of difference of how they look differently okay so this is what we're going to do uh, approaching slowly layer by layer now should we go with the background first or with the penguins first it's completely a choice just for the sake of simplicity and ease of painting Let's do the penguins first because we'll need some layers to dry. And while they're drying, we can go ahead and do all this uh, empty areas which doesn't require that much work, okay? So let's get started. First, I'm going to start with some yellow. Let me show you my palette. Not a nice one, very messy, <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, I do have yellows. I do have some orange. I do have some blues that I can use. I'm really not trying to copy the photograph. It's totally fine. Now, this is my black I, I have here, okay? It is, it's called Payne's Gray. It is from a tube. Okay, let me show you. This is Payne's Gray. And I hardly use this, but sometimes I do. Okay, sometimes I do. I, I don't like the flat texture, but sometimes it's okay. Uh, and then I'll show you how you're going to mix your own blacks with two colors. One is going to be ultramarine blue, French ultramarine. And the second is going to be burnt sienna. I'll just get that color out. I'll have to find where it is. Okay. These two, although the brands are a little different, it might give a little different uh, black because they, the brands matter. So we'll see how it comes out and then you can really, you know, figure out, should I go with this brand or not go with this brand? Okay. But they're go both great brands. It's just how they are mixed. Okay. So let's get started. And as we go, I'll let you know what else to do. I'm definitely going to start with a nice yellow. It's not going to be too dark. The reason being, the area around it is going to be dark enough. We need to get that contrast, okay? If I make it too dark, 
then I don't know how much black I'll need here. Okay, so I am definitely going to keep it not very, very saturated. And from here, you can see, I'm going to take some yellow, wash it out, almost like when you say wash it out, I'll just take some clean water and try to just blend it here. Okay. While it's still wet, I can take a little bit more yellow just on the upper hand and leave it. So go ahead and finish this part while I'll wait for you guys. There are so many colors you can use to make blacks. It's just not blue or brown. Um, there's some very, very saturated kunaku rings uh, that you have, like you can make it from red and green you can make it from blue and orange because these are all complementary colors and complicant complementary colors when combined together make mud which means slowly you can if you put 50 50 percent of those complementary colors they make black so yes a little bit of practice but you need to have the right colors while that is being dried I'll go ahead and add the other yellows here. A tinge of orange here, actually. Maybe you can add some red or a bit of orange here. So wherever I see yellow, I can just go ahead and add a teeny bit. Planning a painting is very important in watercolors because once you put that paint on paper, it'll start to dry. And then you'll have to rush, 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 which you don't want, obviously. You need you need some good, smooth um washes on your paper all right while this is being dried we can go ahead and i can tackle this area if i look at the photograph here it's kind of a gray but it also has a tinge of blue so what i'll do is let me try this is the tube gray or the black i have and take a bit of or the tinge of blue here try to mix in here it's going to be pale okay really when i say pale it has more water and less paint okay i I'm going to keep it light because that's what I see. And two, if I need more paint, I can go ahead and add more uh, color to it. But if I make it too dark, it's hard to remove color. Some of the paints are really staining. So not a good idea to scrub the paper. As you can see, really light, really pale. I'll wait for you guys to catch up.
sometimes you cannot recognize the color when you initially see your subjects. You feel, oh, this is just black. The more you keep looking at the picture, you'll start to see more clarity about how much paint to apply, or is this really black, or is this something beneath it? It's hardly any picture is completely flat as like just black, okay? There's some warmth under it. If I see the picture again, I see there's some same gray use here, which I'm going to use, but I'll just wait for you guys to catch up. Picking the same blue and the blackish grayish mixture. I'm going to continue here. Usually painting fur like this, very delicate fur, the way if you see in the picture uh, is, it takes time. It's not something that can be rushed in watercolors. But I still wanted to do it because I thought, we could still try to create something um, realistic, but little loose. You see, this side is slightly darker. Just defining an edge here. Okay. I'll wait for you guys. Transparency in watercolors comes through very delicate thin washes. If you just pick like a blob of paint and try to apply on watercolor, sure you can paint, but they don't look transparent. Something that we usually do in acrylics and oils. This requires patience. This requires more in-depth understanding of colors and what you see as an observer. But it's fun. I think that's that itself is a challenge, but the most ethereal quality of watercolors. There's so much underneath. Next, before I paint, I'm going to just mention, I'm going to do a layer here to like a base, okay? And I'm going to use the same colors of blue, and kind of a gray uh, wash, okay? And maybe a little darker because we're going to add some more black and everything on it. Here we go. I think this is too blue. Not too thick because we have so many more layers to go here. And this doesn't have to be perfect, you know? It's okay if a certain area is a little more darker or lighter, as long as it's got some or like a bit of color. Mega? Yeah. If someone's asking when her paint is too blue, what color should she add to make it more gray? Um, you can add, uh, well, orange is the complementary color. So that's what you would mix in. Or you can even add, try to add a little bit of brown to it. Help, Jenny. Yes, thanks. <laughs> okay. Oops. So see, I lost track here, and you can see that the place 
right. And do you see this odd streak that I got here? This happens when you are not sure what colors you're going to put and then you lose track. So yeah, planning is very important. Okay, so I think we'll let this area dry because we are going to come back and add more layers here. Just going to soften it here. In the meanwhile, I'll show you how to mix black. Okay. Mixing black. Let me see if I have another burnt sienna. Well, this is drying just on the side. Let me show you how to make your own black, okay? So I'm taking a small squeeze of burnt sienna, okay? This is brown, burnt sienna is something as brown, okay? And I'm using French ultramarine, almost equal quantity. And I know it's hard to measure like exact. You'll have to do a little bit of trial and error. And I'm using both same brands, Daniel Smith Extra Fine Watercolors. They are one of the best companies. And just a teeny bit of water. And I'm going to try to mix this. And looks like that. Like I might get a black, but let's see. If you don't, if you feel it's too brown, add some more blue. If you think it's too blue, then add a bit of brown. I feel I need a bit of uh, blue here, okay? Let me show you on a small scrap paper. It is kind of brown, it doesn't look that black. I need really pitch black. So maybe I'll add a bit of blue again. And again, there's so many different kinds of French ultramarines as well. So you'll have to do a bit of trial and error, but there are so many blogs and websites that show how to mix these colors well. This is much better. Do you see how black this is? I was just still a bit on the brown side. I do need a little bit more of black. Uh, um, blue but we're getting closer okay so this is how you can mix your own blacks and in fact uh, if you like you get these like small containers you can just make that big batch of it and put in it and make sure the lid is sealed and when i do big paintings i already have a black ready okay because i cannot just keep keep making uh, black every two minutes. So I make this big batch and then once the water is on the surface, I have to go very fast with a very big brush. So that's how you make blacks. The best part uh, about mixing your own blacks is um, even with a little bit of unevenness that is has, it's natural, okay? And it doesn't look flat. So while this is drying, let's go a little bit in this background area and paint. Now, just like the photo shows, it's blue. You can choose any color you like. You can have a bit of green tinge into it, make it look more, you know, fun. Totally fine. Make it your painting, especially backgrounds. I always prefer people 
tweak a bit of the background because it gives you a little bit of luxury to you know make it your own painting and not just copy what anyone is teaching actually so even i'm going to explore a little bit i don't mind a bit of green here and i'm going to go nice pale not too thick keep it fun it if you see the wash is not very flat and very structured there's some spots where it shows a bit of white areas here and there almost like clouds right definitely have a bit of fun when you're doing some backgrounds like this go a little loose make it your own painting and again i can paint this whole area until the bottom but i'm not going to uh let's split it into small parts always easy to handle especially if you have a smaller brush then you will have to really break it down although if i do something like background like this you need to have a bigger brush Oh, yeah, this looks nice. You can add a bit of what they say, kind of a texture while it's still wet. Okay, I'm adding a bit of paint while it's still wet because it can just blend in. If it's starting to dry, it's going to not look so good. Okay, so this part is done. And I'll wait for you guys to catch up, then we'll move on to the second part, and then the third part. Because this is still drying, and I don't want to put any paint on it. So that's how I am planning my painting. If you want to know more about colors, there is a very nice blog. Uh, this artist writes. She's just amazing and she knows so much about colors. I think her name is Jane Blundell, I think. J A N E B L U N D E L L. I'm not sure about the last name, but she's amazing she knows so much about colors and uh, she does a lot of experiments on it and especially color mixing you should definitely read her blogs um, if you are interested in painting more with watercolors and she even gives a lot of characteristics about how each paint behaves Okay, so while this is drying, I'm going to mix a nice thick mix so that we can go I'm taking a lot of paint and some water and making a mixture before I start painting here. Remember, if there's not enough paint on your palette and you just start brushing, it's going to dry out. So definitely keep some paint ready. Okay, so this is the kind of blue I'm going to go in. And very carefully around the shapes here. And 
is going to be a bit of patience, but that's okay. And see, this blue is slightly darker than the upper part. And again, it's not, like I said, very perfect. It's got some mixtures here and there. Same way, go to the other hand. And neatly and carefully carve out the areas to paint. Just remember, big areas, big brush. It's just going to make it so much easier to move around because you won't have enough, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> enough time to always go in, dip in your brush into your palette. So definitely keep those brushes loaded. When I say loaded, it means it has a lot of paint and water on it. Okay. This is good. And let it dry. And you guys can in this place and I'll wait for you guys. Okay, let's continue. I'm going to now get into the rocks area here. And again, I'm going to look at my black and white picture to see how dark or light I should go. It does have some tinges of blue reflecting from the sky, right? So I'm just going to take a little bit of blue in my brush and you can see there's not enough not a lot on it it's kind of dry and that's what I want I don't have that much water on it because I'm not going to apply it all the place just a few areas here and there because I also want to apply a bit of 
the gray or the other black tones that you see on the rock. But some few areas, I just want to keep it blue. Then I can take a bit of burnt sienna. Why burnt sienna? I do see some browns and a bit of yellow here and there. I can take a tiny bit of yellow, some burnt sienna. And just in some areas, remember it's the earth here, okay, and it has some warmth. And just to give a little bit of warmth, I'm adding this, maybe a bit of yellow too, I don't mind. While it's still wet, I can take a bit of the gray that you mixed and the black that you mixed by yourself or from the tube. And I'll go into some areas here. I think I kind of lost the shape here, but that's okay. It's fine. I'll get back to it. Not everywhere. Just trying to follow a shape here. Okay, I'll come back here and define some of these rocks to make it look like there are rocks there. But for now, just keeping it a little pale. Okay. This looks a bit dry, sure. We'll go back to that. But before that, some more things to do on the top and then we'll go ahead. So just two more minutes and then we can go ahead on the top. I'm going to take the same gray and make a very thin, sorry, a uh, very thin wash here. If you see at this beak, okay, leave that there. 
Then I'm going to take a bit of burnt sienna. And I'll tell you, oops, why. I'll take a bit of burnt sienna and here I see just in the upper half, the, the bottom is this nice golden kind of a glow here. Maybe you don't have to go throughout, but just at least this area. Just blending it here. Okay, next. Now I am going to use my black from the tube for this one. It is really black. And just, I want to try different blacks for this painting. So I'm going to use that. And it's going to be really thick and nice. Okay, less water. And I'm going to paint. This. Penguin here. It's too too dry, so need some water. And go very carefully. If you can use a smaller brush here. I'm okay with this brush. But the point is to keep it super dark. Thick. Make it really look stand out against that yellow. And yes, there you go. This requires a little bit of patience, but that's how it is. I'm just going to soften this area here. We just let this dry now. We don't touch this part. Then we'll move on to this one. And again, take the whatever black you want. Maybe I'll use the one that is mixed by my, the two colors that we have and see how it looks. It is definitely a little bit on the brown side. So yes, you can see you will see the difference. Slowly again. As you come down here, there's a lot of brown here. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's slightly different if you see. 
This is more on the brown side. This is really on the black side. I'm just continuing to outline these areas to get a structure of the penguin. See, now the whole painting is coming together. We just have these areas left and then we are done. Same way, I can continue adding darks here. And every time I'm even I'm using the black, even if I use the black from the tube, I mix it with a little bit of blue or with a little bit of, or with a bit of brown, just to make it look a little different each time. Otherwise, they'll all look just so same and boring. So whatever you feel, just tweak it a little bit. Okay, next is going to be a very important part and I'll show you. But before that, just two minutes so that you guys can catch up. So if you have a black paint already mixed or from the tube, how do you make it gray? All you do is you add some water to it. Look at this. I'll add a little more paint, it becomes dark. I'll add a little more paint, it becomes dark. If I want to make it light, I add water. If you want to make it dark, I add paint. So just with one color, you're getting so many different colors. Okay, and this is what the, this penguin is going to be all about. We're going to just tweak the same color and add it. So to paint now this area, the fur feeling area, if you take a look at it very closely, nothing but the same color, but with different values. Just watch. As you come from top, they're lighter. Okay? And then it becomes a little sharper and darker. Here you can see there's some really dark areas, some dense areas. And on the left side here, really dark which means you're going to just add more layers of paint once each layer dries. Same thing here. Wherever you feel really dark, you're going to add more paint to it. Okay, so this is going to take a bit of time, but I'll show you how to do it. Now I'm going to just take a bit of same gray. and. You can see either you can make it like a small, very tiny brush strokes, or even a little bit of like a wash. Wash means just like a sp spread of paint. Again, you can add a bit of blue, the kind of blues that we were using in throughout the painting, because you will start to notice some blues here and there. As it's coming down, I'm going to add a little more paint here. Do you see that? It's true, fur is a little complicated, but 
it's worth trying. It's just so good when you when the result is out. If you give a little bit of patience, it's spectacular. And you can also do a little bit of dry brushing here where you hardly have any water on your brush. You can see, I'm sure you can hear the noise. It means there's not enough water on it. So just dry brushing will give you some uneven texture surfaces which will make it look really like realistic. And as I keep going, I see wherever is a dark area, I go ahead and I add some ducks. If I really need a very, very smooth finish to this kind of painting, I'll have to wait each time and then go ahead but obviously we don't have that much time for this uh, workshop so that's why i am going one layer above the other immediately but see every time i add some paint it is darker because i'm intensifying or saturating those areas with more paint. And that's what is going to give me its three-dimensional look. As you come below, you see a lot of dark. The reason being, it's it's like the base, okay? It probably has shadows and everything. And you, you need to make it look like it's standing on something. And that base is going to be usually very dark. That's the reason the base is dark. Keep following the shapes, small area at a time, and you can just add colors. Okay. And also change the direction a little bit. See, fur or hair, whether it's human or anything, any animal or anything, it has a direction. Okay. And that's what makes that thing look very real. So here I see it's going from out to in like this. So give a little bit of direction to make it look real. Because in painting, it's just not the strokes. The direction of the stroke is also important, whether it's horizontal or vertical or obliques or diagonals. Very minute things. But yes, I do understand it comes with time. You have to paint enough to observe those things. So paint every day, guys. It's, it's amazing. 
I paint every day, no matter what. Okay, I'll give you guys five minutes to catch up and then we have the last part left and then we'll be done soon. Okay, any questions, please let me know. You can keep tweaking uh, your painting. Oops, that's too blue. Should let this dry so that if I need to add something, I can go ahead. But right now, I don't want to make it muddy. Of course, I missed a small area here. This blue paint here. Right. And if you guys need any help regarding supplies or anything else, want to know more about my classes and everything, send me an email at megawatercolor at gmail.com. And I'll be happy to send you a list, the kind of paints and brushes and paper I use, where I buy from, there are a lot of discounts. I'm just going to put my email in the chat box. Yep. I'm going to go in to paint the base, the rocks here. And I'm going to use some dark, kind of brown and the blue mix I made so that I can highlight these areas where I can say, oh, this is the darker part of the rock. Give it some structure. Some areas are more blue. Some areas are mostly gray. Doesn't matter what color it is. Just remember where you see darks, make it dark. Where you see it's light, make it light. That's observation in realistic painting. You paint what you see, not you, not what you imagine. That could be as abstract. But in realism, you paint what you see. If you see blue, then it is blue. And of course, you can change something in your painting. But the primary way you approach realistic or realism is you paint what you see. And some people, everybody sees different things, which is totally fine. You paint what you see not any other artist, what they see. If you don't see brown, don't paint it. Okay, I've got a little bit of Feeling of the rocks here. Just making some areas dark. Okay. 
And after this dries, you can come back and see, do you want to add more layers? Just maybe some more darker areas to give it a little more definition. You need to always keep coming back, maybe make a few tweaks. And only when you feel it looks good enough, your painting is almost ready. I think this is good enough and it's a good idea to stop now. If you feel tomorrow morning need some color or something, go ahead. Always sleep over your paintings that night. Keep, uh, keep them away, especially turn it, you know, turn it up uh, to, towards the wall. And then come and see it with a fresh eye. That's what I do because sometimes you are so much into it that you just get so tired of it and you just find faults in it. So it's a good idea to keep it away for a couple of hours, come back and see what you see. So that's it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, painting these penguins. And uh, let me know if you have any other questions and send me your paintings. You can tag me on Facebook, Instagram, whatever you like, but definitely send me your work. I still get a lot of paintings from a lot of people who paint. Uh, that's really um, encouraging to me as well. So keep painting, guys. <laughs>